Okay, now here I have a function f of x equals square root of x plus 5. Okay. And I'm asked to find f inverse of x and also include any restrictions uh, that the function may have. And so before we go any further, I'm just going to graph uh, our original function here. Okay, x uh, is the square root of x plus 5. If you graph it, you see this right here. And we can look at both the graph and the uh, equation and conclude that the domain, and we're just looking at the domain of f of x, Okay, so we're looking at the domain for f of x. This is x has to x plus five has to be greater than or equal to zero. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative five. In other words, the domain is from negative five, okay, to positive infinity. And we're going to try and find the range of f of x as well. Okay. And you can see here from the graph, if I hit trace, uh, from, from, the, from looking at the domain, the x values can never be less than negative 5. So negative 5 is as low as I'm allowed to go. Okay? And if I go all the way down to negative 5 for the x values, the y value is going to give me 0. So that means that the, for the range, uh, y has to be greater than or equal to 0 because I start out at negative 5. And I have I start out at y equals zero. Sorry, y equals zero right here. Okay. And I have nowhere to go but up. As I move across the graph, you can see that it's it's always increasing. Okay. And same thing here. If I I start out here, set, um, putting negative five in here, and the values keep increasing, f of x is always going to keep on increasing. The y value is going to keep on increasing. Okay. So I can say that for the range, it's from zero to positive infinity. And so again, having these values down for the original function is going to help me a whole lot when I go and actually find the inverse function. Okay? And if you recall what an inverse function does is that it swaps the range and the domain. So if I have something like this, this is the domain for f of x. It's going to map it to the range for f of x. Okay. But if I have f inverse, it means it takes something from the range and puts it back into the domain. And I'm just reviewing this real quick. Uh, this is from the basic discussion of f inverse. Okay, So the domain of the original function is now the range for the new function okay, for the inverse. And the range of the original function is now the domain for the inverse function. Okay. And so now let's actually look at the inverse and let's try to find um, f inverse. Okay. So I start out with the function. I want to make a variable here y and set it equal to the original function square root of x plus 5 and then I'm gonna uh, solve for x so I have to square both sides so I get y squared is equal to x plus 5 subtract y from both sides get y squared minus 5 equals x okay so my inverse function f inverse of x is equal to x squared minus 5 now, if we look at this, it looks like the domain is going to be all real numbers. I don't have any division here. I don't have any square roots in here. So it should, I should be able to put any number in here. However, uh, we have to respect the original range, the, re the original restrictions of the original function. Remember that the range of the original function is now going to be the domain of the new function. Okay? So even if... Even if this inverse function tells me that the domain is all real numbers, because it's an inverse, it's derived, it comes from the original function f of x, it inherits some of the original restrictions, namely the restrictions on the, the range. Okay? So the range here has, has, um, goes from 0 to positive infinity. So we also have to make a note here that we can put any value in for x as long as it's greater than or equal to zero. 
And so this is what it means by the, the restriction. In, let me draw this. In, and that's my final answer. Okay, so once again, once I find the F inverse, it may have a domain of all real numbers. We, we have to keep in mind that the F inverse inherits the restrictions from the original function, from f of x. Okay, and what it inherits is the restrictions on the range because we're swapping the two. So the range of the original function goes from zero to positive infinity. That means the domain of f inverse has to go from zero to positive infinity. It cannot uh, go outside of those restrictions.